Hello and welcome to another edition of All Code Sucks. Uh, today we're looking at a piece of code that I found at work, today actually, and I'm gonna show you a simplified version of it and what's wrong and how I even found it in the first place and how you can use some tools to detect this particular problem and hopefully fix it for you. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, we have a little bit of code. Uh, this is grossly simplified from the actual real code, uh, but you can kind of get the gist of it here. So we have a function do lots of work, which takes in some number of things and then performs some side effect on each of the things and does some work here. And there's a particularly buggy piece of this code, which is this line here. Uh, and there are arguably two bugs here. And I will show you first how I found this particular bug. Uh, if we make a virtual line and we pip install MyPy, I was improving the type coverage of the code at work. And MyPy is actually, I think, going to be okay with this code so far. Uh, but I was using a little bit of an automated refactor that I wrote that I haven't really released yet to find functions that don't return anything and add arrow none on them. The idea being, uh, if we can automatically type a good chunk of code that doesn't do anything and just only perform side effects, this will make it easier to type the rest of the code base. And so all my little linter auto formatter did was add arrow none here. And then my by helpfully, um, I guess this has to arrow none. My by should helpfully point out the particular problem here. Oh, because I <laughs> work has check untyped devs, but I guess that's off by default, which I uh, my guy heavily points out the problem here. Do some work does not return a value. It only ever returns none. And that seems strange at a glance. You're like, oh, surely this is submitting some work to uh, our red pool executor. No, actually what this is doing is it's calling the function eagerly and passing none into exe.submit. Uh, what the author intended to do was write the code like this, but even that also doesn't work because uh, nothing awaits, or nothing, nothing waits for this actual future to happen here. Um, so let me show you uh, sort of how to fix this. So let's let's actually um, let's actually uh, put a put a breakpoint here to show you what's happening here and why it's not exactly. Well, actually, before we even do that, this code works. There's nothing wrong with this code. It just doesn't do what it's intended to. Do. It spins up a thread pool for no reason. That's basically it. Uh, but if we run this, you'll see that it, it actually does do all the work. So that part at least is fine. Uh, so it's not broken. It's just taking the long way there for no reason. Anyway, let's add a feature here. Let's put a breakpoint here and see what it's actually doing uh, with this call here. And if we run this now, you'll see that we have a future. Uh, and the future is already finished, and it has raised type error because it, it's very quick to... Uh, try and call none and error there. Uh, and if we ask for the result of this future, we'll actually get our, our type error back. None type object is not callable, and that's because this you know, already did its side effect, passed in none, and then that is what was trying to be submitted to our executor here. Uh, now, a good rule of thumb, at least in, in my opinion, is if you're going to put future, or you're going to create futures in a thread pool executor, you should always eventually wait for them. Um, and uh, one way to do that is to have futures list here and then do futures.append this and then for future in futures.as current.futures.as uh, uh, completed futures is to grab the result of them and then um, do with it what you need to do. Uh, in this case, like they're void, they're, they were supposed to be void, so it's fine to just grab the result here. I think there's a shorthand to do this better, but I don't actually deal with this ability all that often, so do with it what you will. Uh, but if we were to run this now, we would have gotten that error out. And so hopefully someone would have noticed uh, this error and been like, oh yes, of course, none type is not callable. I, I had implemented this completely incorrectly, and if we go and fix the actual implementation here, uh, now you can see we actually have interleaving, and like it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> we got one interleaving here. I guess the work is so small that it's uh, very unlikely to have the threads 
um, bounce off each other. But anyway, this is what the code intended to do, uh, but faulty called to submit was one bug. The other bug was not checking for the results of the features. So combining those two without any type checking and uh, yeah, that's how this thing got to production. Of course, this code was written long before type checking was popular. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope, hope you found this useful. Just a quick little tidbit, as well as something to look out for if you're dealing with concurrent futures and futures and uh, accidentally calling them the wrong way, as well as like uh, kind of a cool thing that the type checker helps us with here. Uh, in fact, even if this, I think if this even returns int, uh, and you do the same thing here. You would have gotten a similar error, but MyPy would also have caught this too. So it's not just specifically, yeah, you can see here, like, argument to submit has type int expected this. So you would have gotten a different error if it actually returned some sort of value. Um, the none was the particular case. There. But anyway, hopefully you found this interesting and uh, something, something to look out for. And I'll see you in the next one.